So do you like to use ribbon mics on horns most of the time? I find it there. The old kind? The old, believe? well, you know, uh, uh, ribbons sound like ribbons, and it, to find an old good ribbon is a wonderful thing but they're very hard to find. Mm -hmm. But ribbons give you a nice, warmer, honey kind of top. And trumpets can really cut through and, and be very harsh on the top, especially for some reason in microphones. Whereas, you know, a trumpet, when you're in the room and a trumpet player plays, it'll sound totally different. I mean, the whole idea of all these microphones is in order to get it from being a beautiful, from being an acoustic wave to turning it into an electrical signal that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole idea, and that's why you need all these different mics because everything's a little different. Mm -hmm. So you listen to the individual player's sound and adapt. Yeah, you listen to the sound. You're right, and you and you listen. Also, you listen. You got to listen to how many parts there are and the way they interact with each other. You hear the section. I'll bring out the mics, and then I'll hear the part. And I'll set it up. I'll set it up before they get there, bef before they're playing. But then once they start playing it, I will make adjustments to what's, what, the parts are doing and how it's appearing in the, in the control room. What are some good options for uh, if you don't have any ribbons available? I will, I will try. A dynamic microphone. I will try, you know, uh, 57s. Actually, I will try a D112. I will try whatever I can find that will not give that harshness. Also, uh, I'll find that if I'm stuck with condensers, if I have them in a nice room, I will have them on, put them on Omni, and they're much more, less prone to be harsh. Really? Mm -hmm. Any condenser? All condensers? Well, no, 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 no. I wouldn't. I, I, I can't say I've tried all condensers, but I've I've know that when I'll go off to Omni, you also have less of a proximity effect, so you, they're, they're more controllable. Okay. Though I do like to use ribbon mics on the trombones, I'll use a dynamic, and sometimes I'll use a condenser. It depends on what's available, but if I have four four ribbons or something, I will they will end up on the trumpets and the trombones. If I have a couple of ribbons, they'll they'll stay with the trumpets. And then I'll I'll go with uh, condenser microphones for the trombones. Do you think it's important when you're recording a section of horns for all the mics to be the same type of mic? No, I don't figure that's important, though I think the polarity should be the same. The polarity. The polarity of the microphones. You don't want to have any phasing problems between the mics. So this is something that you concern yourself with. Uh, today, in today's world, with the digital workstations, you can record and then look and see polarity problems, as opposed to having to deal with them purely with listening in, in mono and stuff like that. Whereas today, you can see the polarity problems in, in uh, your, your DAW. Do you have anything to add regarding orchestral instruments like clarinet or bassoon? Well, you know, the main thing about those instruments is it is the space that they're in that really gives them their sound. They have to have the air to move, and the, the air has to bounce around the room. So the main thing I would add would be is that when you have a, uh, an ensemble or you're doing a... a parts with a, a section, the idea is to, be to, is to set up the microphones in the room and then use your close microphones to add to it. I tend to use the microphone that the, the horn section has blended themselves. I'll use more of the, f the distant microphones and then add anything I need with the close so mics. So you have a close mic on each instrument in addition to the... It depends. No, if it, it depends on the size of the section. If I had three trumpets, I would not mic them all. I would give them maybe two mics, and they would sit together, and I would be backed off of them. There would still be mics in the room, but I may do that, and the uh, sax section, I might hit all the saxes, or two bones, I would have them play into one microphone. Two mics for how many guys? I would do two mics for, th for two guys, three guys. Uh, I'm talking about say trumpets, two trumpets, three trumpets, four trumpets, I would do two mics just sitting there so I could spread them out and they would, they would be along, uh, aiming at the area of the microphones. And then, I, yeah. So in other words, I would not have to, if I needed to add the high trumpet a little bit, I could just bring that into the room. If I needed to bring in the lower trumpet part or if I needed more of the saxes, I could bring it in to the, to the, to the, 
the ambient sound of the horns. Because, I mean, if you stuck a horn in an anechoic chamber and a guy played it, you would, would not believe the lack of musicality of it because they, these are old instruments and the room is just as important as the instrument. So you depend a lot on the ambience of the yep, room. You depend a lot on the ambience of the room. and Right. That's why if I was doing a horn section, I wouldn't want to go and do it in RCA, you know, RCA Studio A or some gigantic room unless you were doing something that was an orchestral piece that you wanted a big, live, reverby, ambient sound. I would want to do the horn section in a smaller, tighter, funky room, especially if you're in jazz or you're doing the funk or even rock. You just don't want a giant ball. I don't. Some people may, but I don't. Thank you. 